Hey everyone, this is Alyssa Coram here with Ed Carson, news editor here at IBD. And we have a look at the stock market today for October 27th. So Ed, it looks like we saw the major indexes finish lower today, a bunch of a bit amid a bunch of tech earnings. Absolutely. <laughs> and then you can see the NASDAQ took the brunt of it. And it's uh it was around the 50-day line yesterday, and now now it's definitely going below that. So Mm -hmm. um, there was a slew of stuff after hours. Exactly. Starting with Amazon, a huge miss. So do you want to run down the numbers for us? I'm going to pull up the stock action. You know, it's always tricky. Amazon has big misses or beats. This time it reported 52 cents a share. Now that was actually a big increase versus a year ago, but mm -hmm. analysts were expecting 78 cents. Yeah. Uh, revenue rose 29% uh, to 32.7 billion. That was just above estimates. Uh, the stock was is really volatile, and yeah. uh, the last I had seen it, it was down about four percent, and okay. so that was you know pretty significant loss. May put it below its 50-day line, as you can see, it really right. has not mm -hmm. been below the 50-day line much for the past year. Right. So it has touched that level in the past, but as you mentioned, it has found support there. So it would be good if we could see Amazon finding support at that level, but if it does breach it, you know that would be the first time, as you said, in quite a while. Yeah, let me add that uh, Amazon's Q4 outlook was maybe a little light on the revenue side. I mean, that uh, they may be cautious and mm -hmm. everything. It'll be interesting to see what analysts say, because sometimes the stock will show this big move after hours, and the next day everybody says, boy, that's not how I felt about it. And, that, uh, right, that's true. It doesn't necessarily indicate tomorrow's action, but the stock is currently down about 5%. So we'll see tomorrow what analysts have to say, how the stock will react to that. We also had earnings from Google owner Alphabet, but some positive news uh, for this company with a beat on both the top and bottom lines. Yeah, it was like uh, EPS was 906. That was uh, you know, a little bit above estimates. and. You know, the revenue was also above, above target. So there were some numbers like cost per click. That's an, you know, an important ad metric. Right. That was a little below some estimates. Mm. Uh, the stock wasn't trading. I mean, it was, it was very volatile, but uh, it's been moving up and down. Not a, whole right. lot of, not a whole lot of move, really. Okay, currently tracking up 1.5%. Also, we had IBD 50 member Gigamon, ticker GIMO report. And how did they do? Uh, they did pretty well. They uh, their EPS rose sixty four percent, and their revenue rose, um, you know, forty seven percent, both above estimates. And the stock is up after see. hours. But during the regular session, you can yes. see this network security firm did not have a good day. It's not really mm -hmm. clear what was driving it, but uh, so it's, it's up, but it's only recouping some of those losses, at least when I was last looking at it. Right, uh, we'll have to check on that for you. But in the meantime, we also had Lumentum, ticker L-I-T-E report, and they beat on both the top and bottom lines, looked like their outlook was on the stronger side. You know, their range did have analysts, you know, with it, analyst estimates are within the expected range, so. Yeah. But again, intraday, this stock fell. Well, this stock fell sharply. Um, and actually, the stock is falling after hours, and uh, you know, it's not exactly clear what's driving it. Now, these stocks, Lumentum is part of what you know, has been called a fiber optic super cycle. And those stocks have been flying you know, for a long time. And so, you know, Acacia, this, you know, notably. Yes, and we'll get to that in just a moment <laughs> here. But you know, so maybe they're priced for perfection. So you know, the fact that they mm. beat and they had pretty good guidance, just isn't enough. Now, momentum was falling mm -hmm. in large part, it seems, during the regular session because of Acacia. Yes, so we can pull that up. Acacia Communications, ticker ACIA. A big drop here. One of its clients reported a revenue miss, right? That's right, Chinese telecom equipment giant ZTE. So. You know, at first that didn't, I just kept on building momentum. And then there was another fiber optic stock, the one that really hasn't done very well. That one also sold mm -hmm. off, so. Mm -hmm. um, Infinera, Infinera, right. that's right. I and I -N -F -N. FN, I -N -F -N. But that one really hasn't been rising. That's been down all the year. All right, well, also uh, aside, aside from Acacia's notable move today here, hitting its lowest level in quite a few months with volume nearly 300% above average, we also saw some interesting chart action from Tesla on the heels of its quarterly report, the stock rising slightly, but uh, pairing much of its gains as 
you know, analysts, I guess, are, are weighing in post earnings with the stock hitting resistance at both this 200 day and 50 day line. Again, closing up less than 1% after gaining as much as 5.6% in the morning. So, Ed, what do you think? Well, some of it's the market, some of it's technical resistance, but I mean, it's sort of like, I would put it this way. It's sort of like if you can normally jog at a couple miles an hour, you're just plodding along, and then it's like, I really got to make it. And he, you know, Tesla ran out. They really wanted to get a profit this time. I mean, right. And so maybe they really pushed it, mm-hmm. but maybe people are thinking, well, are they just going to ga- are they gonna run out of gas, so to speak? You know, um, or electricity. Electricity. They're going to run out of <laughs> Battery charge. Power. And because, you know, so that may be some concern that they, they did a good job with the quarter, but it's not sustainable. I mean, mm-hmm. maybe it will be, but that might be some of the concern. All right, let's just zoom in a little bit more there so uh, so we can get a good look at, well, then I'm kind of covering it a little bit. But anyway, I thought that this action was notable. And then also I was reading that a UBS analyst put a sell rating on the stock, commenting on those earnings, saying that much it would have reported a loss of 18 cents a share had it not been for tax credits. Oh, yes. So tax credits have been a big benefit for Tesla for a long time. I mean, it's right. Uh, many ways you could say they're in the tax credit business. Ah, uh, yeah. All right. So moving on to another big tech name, we have Apple, which had its Mac event today. You know, kind of the same old stuff when it comes to upgrades. It's thinner, lighter, faster. But something neat that I saw was this new touchpad that they have on the MacBooks. I think that's kind of an interesting new feature as well as an update to their Apple TV stuff. So making it easier for you to, I guess, access TV content. Now, as far as Apple stock goes, can you give us a a general idea of the trends we've been seeing? Oh, wrong ticker. Well, the stock, I believe, uh, yeah, it it fell again a little bit today. And that follows a a drop yesterday following Mm -hmm. its earnings, which were better than expected, but nonetheless, you know, didn't please investors. Right. You know, you know, again, the stock has been rising, mm-hmm. and so a lot of the good news has been priced in. So right. there probably wasn't a real lot of surprise with mm-hmm. today's news. Exactly. And so the mar- the market's down. You know, one per- you know zero point seven percent on the Nasdaq, and well, you know, Apple's down a similar amount today. Mm-hmm. So it's mm-hmm. probably more than that. More about that. Right. And also, I feel like in past Apple events, it's pretty rare if the stock at least has a st- sustained rise, even if it's you know, good news or an update. So I feel like that's kind of typical for an Apple announcement. All right, moving on among chip makers, we have Qualcomm agreeing to buy NXP semiconductors. So there's been a lot of consolidation, I feel like, going on in the chip space, right? There has been, uh, you know, and one of the things about Qualcomm and NXP, ironically, they're both Apple chip suppliers, but this is actually a move by Qualcomm to get away from Apple because mm-hmm. NXP is now, um, the biggest business for them is in automotive chips. Mm-hmm. Due um, to an acquisition that they had made. That's right, they bought Freescale about a year ago and so NXP is big in that and of course, you know, all the infotainment, everything to do about autonomous driving, mm-hmm. uh, that's that's a growth market, so. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's what, uh, you know, Qualcomm did well today. Um, yeah. This is yep, a gap up to a new high, it looks like, in pretty strong volume. It did pair some of its gains, but we did see the market reverse lower. So yeah. that could definitely be attributing. All right, and just some details of the deal. It's a $39 billion or $110 a share deal. Okay, so coming up tomorrow, it's been a big week from for earnings, and we have more tomorrow, starting with oil giants Chevron and Exxon, both of them are expected to post big bottom line declines, as far as I'm aware, with uh, Chevron's earnings expected to plunge nearly 70%, while Exxon Exxon Mobil's uh, is expected to drop 43%. All right, so kind of set the landscape for us among these, you know, oil giants here we've had we've seen oil rally in recent weeks right yeah and it's it's way off the lows from earlier the year and uh, and so that's probably what the stocks have improved on, mm-hmm. on you know because people are looking ahead saying yeah that's the earnings are going to improve you know the comparisons are going to get a lot easier in the fourth quarter so the big profit declines but you know i don't know about the, the fourth quarter but you know it certainly will be that they may return to growth pretty soon mm-hmm. and um they aren't as exposed as some of the shale players that are just in production they have refining they have some other stuff things but uh, you know, it, it, 
you know, you know, Conoco today rose nearly, you know, rose over six percent at least intraday. You know, that's mm -hmm. another one of those, you know, bigger oil companies. So they had pretty good earnings today. Okay, well, there you go. It's looking like it's on the up and up. We'll have to see uh, what they say in their outlooks and uh, to get further direction on that stock action, perhaps.